Hey folks, looks like I got just a little bit too excited about the Baldur's Gate article yesterday and I have a follow-up article to go over with you today. This one was posted on the Magic the Gathering website. So let's get into it. Hello Oathbreakers. I hope you know I missed your faces and I'm happy to have you back. Today, we're talking a little bit more about Commander Legends, a battle for Baldur's Gate that's going to be coming out in June of this year. I did do an article, not sorry, I did do a video on a different article from the WPN yesterday. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link on the end of the video. So this is a first look at Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. It's going to be released this year. It's going to kind of pick up with a, well, yeah, I'm just going to read it and we'll see what sticks out. And certainly let me know in the comments below what you think, because I really do kind of want to get you guys' you know, brain and thought on this. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make this as easy to read as I possibly can. Just going to... Size this up. There we go. That's a little bit easier on the brain pan. Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate takes the flair and flavor of D&D Adventures in the Forgotten Realms and picks up where the 2020 Commander Legends release left off. A fun first set pack filled with legendary creatures, epic additions to your favorite commander decks, and the return of Commander Draft to bring the battle to your own party of friends. It matches the social gameplay of Magic the Gathering Commander with the flavor and excitement of being a powerful high-level character in Dungeons & Dragons. Whether you're a Dungeons & Dragons fan ready to explore a new multiplayer game or a Magic the Gathering multiplayer master ready to draft and play with friends again, Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate combines those experiences into a unique gameplay for every fan. So here we've got some logos. This is probably going to be the set symbol since it is a commander set. I don't think we're going to be getting a separate set symbol. We do have some product pictures here. Kind of went over these yesterday, but the set boosters are 15 card set boosters. The draft boosters are 20 card packs. You're going to draft two cards out of them as you pass them around the table to build a 60 card commander deck. So you are going to pay attention to the legends that pass your packs. And then there's going to be some collector boosters. Uh, there was announced that some collector boosters are going to be available to sale at premium WPN stores. So those are the cream of the crop stores that have done way too much work to get there. Uh, there's also a bundle, and the bundle is going to be, I want to say, eight set boosters, uh, a premium card that could put in, I believe it's a wand that's going to be later in this article, a spin down life counter, and a 40 land card pack. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, please. And then here's what our pre-release packs look like. They're going to have three uh, uh, three packs in them and a brand new dungeon that uses the initiative rule. We don't know what that is yet, but maybe we'll explain it here. I'm going to go ahead and skip some of this since I just <laughs> told you all about it. But down here near the bottom, it looks like we're getting four commander decks this time, party time, which sounds like it's going to be a white-black party deck, which is not something we got in our last, uh, you know, D&D &D set. So actually adding party into it makes me feel a little bit better if it is what I think it is. Mind Flares, which is blue-black, that's probably going to be a deck that's heavily based around playing out of your opponent's deck, milling, discarding, that type of thing. Dracronic, bleh, Dracron Draconic Descent, which... I love the idea of, since there are like dragonoid, you know, player creature types, you know, there are actual dragons. You can't have D&D without some dragons, so I'd feel bad if they didn't do that. And then Exit from Exile, which will be a red-green deck, so it looks like we're just getting some really good decks. I'm surprised they're doing four, but it is a commander-based set, so it does seem like it makes sense to focus down. All of these dates I covered in the previous article, so I'm just going to skip over them a little bit. There is a guess a article by Gavin Verhey going over Commander Legends. It looks like he covers draft work from the previous Commander Legends. My understanding is they went over what they felt didn't work in the previous set, and they're correcting those for the new set. So check that out if that out if you are interested. I'll put a link to this article in the description. 
Let's see, uh, Magic Arena. Let's go read through this real quick. Alchemy Horizons. So we are going to get a Horizon set that's going to pull some of the uh, stuff that is in this into Alchemy on Arena. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't really play any Alchemy. Let me know if you guys are excited about that and what you think about that. And then here's another video. I'm not going to play that because I don't want to get any sort of copyright strikes or anything. But again, I'm going to leave a, a connection to this. Oh, here's some lands. Bountiful Promenade, Luxury Suite, Morphic Pool, Sea of Clouds, Spire Garden, and Reflecting Pool. Well, all of these are if you have two or more lands. Oh, they come into play untapped unless you have two or more opponents. So I think they did a cycle of these in the last Commander Legend set. And if it wasn't in that, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, it was in... Um, that battle set, the one where you were supposed to two hit draft and two headed giant. Uh, oh, that's good. Drive me nuts now. Well, if you remember, let me know. <laughs> Reflecting pool tap, add one man of any type that a land you control could produce. Oh, that's nice. I think that's a reprint of an old card, so that might actually be high value. Oh, here's some alternate art of these lands. It does seem like they're leading a lot of these previews with the lands now to try to get people excited, hoping that the lands will drive sales of the set, I feel like. Hey, Fireball. This is an old Magic the Gathering card, and it looks like they've reprinted it for this D&D &D set. We're getting two different arts. Hey, Lightning Bolt is making a comeback. Sweet. We've got Ancient Brass Dragon. Uh, flying 7-6. Whenever a Ancient Brass Dragon deals combat damage to a player, roll a d20. When you do put any number of target creature cards with total mana value extra or less from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, where X is the result. That is a little much. I don't see recursion decks not running that. I mean, at seven mana, it's pretty hefty, but it is like every single turn, as long as you can get combat damage through recursion, that's a really good little engine. And then here is Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes. It's a uh, two, a red and a green planeswalker that starts with three loyalty. They can be your commander. Well, that's already breaking my heart a little bit. When Minsk and Boo, uh, what is that? Timeless Heroes enters the battlefield, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you may create Boo, a legendary 1-1 red hamster creature token with trample and haste. Plus one, put three 1-1 counters on up to one target creature you control with trample or haste. I kind of see where this is going. Minus two, sacrifice a creature when you do Minsk and Boo. Timeless Heroes deals X damage to any target where X is that creature's power. If you sacrificed a creature was a hamster, you also draw X cards. That's really cool. Too bad I'm pretty sure Boo is the only hamster in Magic the Gathering, both versions of him, which is a bummer. But I do see running Minsk as an Oathbreaker deck, and also running the Minsk Planeswalker, maybe make, uh, not Planeswalker, uh, card from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, and maybe making it a convertible, um, commander slash Oathbreaker deck. I think I might want to do that. And then here's Wand of Wonder. Uh, you pay for you tap it, you roll a d20, each of your opponents is going to reveal cards from top of their library until they all reveal an instant or sorcery, and then shuffle all other revealed cards this way into their library. And then based on your die result, you're going to get to play up to X of those cards. So, that's pretty interesting. And then we've got the Elder Brain, a 6-6 six, six with Menace, it costs 5 and 2 black. When it attacks a player, you exile all cards in that player's hand. They then draw that many cards. Uh, you may play lands and cast spells from among the exiles cards for as long as they remain exiled. If you cast a spell this way, you may spend mana that was mana of any color to cast it. So that is pretty big. So this is, like I said, a follow-up to yesterday's video. If you guys want more information, please check that out. Thank you so much for dropping by and checking out the video. Let me know what you think of this news in the comments below. If you've made it this far, subscribe. Become a member of this awesome list of people below. And if you want to support the awesome content I make, then please join these awesome people right here. I hope you have a great rest of your day.